so good morning everyone in our last class we have been discussing about the filter designing by placement of poles and zeros in the x plane okay over here we have discussed that uh, the transfer function of a system it is equal to bn which is the frequency independent gain multiplied by uh, roots of the polynomials of the zeros divided by the roots of the polynomial uh, which is meant to determine the poles okay so if you look into the amplitude response it is basically product of the distance of zeros to p divided by product of the distances of poles to p multiplied by the bn uh, which is basically the frequency independent gain okay so if you look over here this modulus of hs it is basically um, inversely proportional to the d1 d2 and so on whereas d1 d2 are the distances of the poles to the point p whereas say z1 z2 and so on where z1 and z2 and uh, uh, up to z to the power n they are basically product of the distances of zeros to the point p <coughs> now to find out the frequency response at a particular frequency this p it should lie over the imaginary axis of the s plane right up to this point we have discussed now let us take up uh, in some cases the first case where we have a single pole filter okay so we know that for a filter to be realizable the number of poles should be greater than equal to the number of zeros okay here in if you see there are no zeros okay that means it meets the criteria and this single pole filter it is basically a realizable filter okay now when we try to put a filter uh, this uh, pole or a zero we have to remember that for stability perspective we have to put another pole which is conjugate to the pole or the zero what we have placed okay so for every pole and a zero there could be a conjugate pole and a zero okay so if you see we are having a pole say p1 and then we are having another pole p1 dash okay now as per our previous days lecture which we just revised h of s it should be inversely proportional to 1 by suppose if i call it as d1 and uh, d1 it is the distance between the pole p1 and a point p or you can say j omega which is equal to j omega okay now this point p it varies okay so <clears throat> d1 is the distance between the pole and the point p whereas p1 dash the distance between the p1 dash and p say it is d1 dash okay so as per our uh, formula which we discussed few moments back then uh, what will be having the amplitude response modulus of h uh, hs it would be basically d1 multiplied by d1 dash okay however what happens is that when you place a pole in the positive axis what we basically do we look into the frequency response starting from 0 to infinity okay so this point p it always changes its location 
initially it will be having a location at say 0 okay then say p1 or um, if we say uh, take it as point d say d0 d1 d2 d3 okay d4 in this way this is going okay and it goes up to d infinity right so what is happening over here is that where we are, we are interested we are interested mainly in the frequency region starting from 0 to infinity we are not interested in the frequency region which are in the negative, uh, negative frequency domain hence if you see the d1 dash in most of the cases it would be greater than d1 ok <coughs> and in many cases you will find d1 dash is much much greater than d1 so what happens when d1 dash is greater than d1 or much much greater than d1 the factor 1 by d1 dash it has a lower contribution as compared to the factor 1 by d1 right since d1 is greater the 1 by d1 dash its contribution towards the hs modulus of hs it will be lower as compared to the 1 by d1 and due to this reason for all practical considerations the modulus of hs it is regarded as that it is uh, uh, inversely proportional to 1 by d1 okay it is inversely proportional to 1 by d1 so we neglect the distance of p1 dash to the point p because it is in most of the cases it will be having a distance which is much much greater than the uh, d1 component okay so now after we have understood this thing so what we have basically so what we have basically we are having modulus of hs it is inversely proportional to the 1 by d1 okay and we know if we have to convert this proportionality uh, uh, proportionality uh, proportional symbol to the equal to symbol then we have to give some constant which is bn in the previous case we have seen so this bn is basically the frequency independent gain <coughs> now for the sake of understanding we will take this constant as 1 we will consider bn equals to 1 for our example now once we have done this now let us see how this pole it affects the amplitude response of any system so we have put this pole at an arbitrary position now if you see what is the distance of this pole to the zero suppose it is say d1 distance again okay now when it is when we are going towards the higher frequency components what is happening this d1 distance its magnitude is decreasing its magnitude is decreasing and up to what point it will decrease it will decrease up to the point j omega naught whereas wherein the point say p12 d and the x axis they are parallel okay so at this point what will happen 
the d1 will be the minimal when the d1 is minimal what will happen h of s modulus of h of s it will be maximized okay so the gain will be maximized and since the gain is maximized we will be having a higher amplitude value okay now this point j of omega naught this point it is regarded as the resonance frequency which is particular for this point uh, for this pole p1 okay it is the resonance frequency for this particular point uh, pole p1 now after this point when we again go towards the higher frequencies what is happening this d1 value it again starts increasing and if it starts increasing the gain will start decreasing okay so if you look into the amplitude response over here so we started with some point because this d1 initial d1 it will be having some uh, because of uh, this d1 is a finite number it will be having some amplitude values and then slowly it increases it reaches a maxima where the distance would be the minimum and then there is a decrease in the amplitude values so at frequency tending to infinity our amplitude values it would be tending to zero okay now <clears throat> what about the frequency components the frequency components or the phase component it varies from basically minus pi to pi okay but the value it can only as you uh, we can only have 0 to pi okay now since we are having 0 to pi and if you look over here the phase component over here is basically the addition of this phases and before it we are having a negative sign so if you see the phase component it varies from 0 to minus pi okay <clears throat> now in the second case let us take a hypothetical scenario where we are having a single zero okay just like the pole for as i discussed few moments back each zero will also have a conjugate zero okay each pole uh, each zero will also have a conjugate zero again if you see the modulus of hs it is, it would be directly proportional to say d1 d1 dash where d1 is the distance between the zero to a particular frequency point say capital d and d1 dash is the distance between the zero the conjugate zero to the point capital d okay so always you will find that the d1 dash it is greater than the d1 okay and what happens in zero what will happen basically lower the value of uh, what the zero tries to do zero tries to bring down the gain so if you want to have a zero which is having more activity then the d1 or d1 dash component should be the minimum so that we have a pronounced effect for that particular zero okay now here in what is uh, happening since d1 dash is always greater than much much greater than the d1 so 
the activity of the d1 will be more pronounced okay because it is directly proportional hence for the analysis of the amplitude response the d1 dash is again not considered that means for stability purposes we put a conjugate zero or a conjugate pole but in practicality the addition of this conjugate zero or the conjugate pole it does not affect the amplitude response what happened daisy you are sleeping in the class pardon okay i hope i am not boring you i hope i am not boring you <laughs> so in both the cases if you see the conjugate the addition of the conjugate pole or is zero it is not affecting the amplitude response i was expecting a question uh, from you guys over here especially that i told you that for a reliable filter we should have a larger number of poles as compared to the number of zeros but in the second case we are only having zeros so basically this is just a theoretical consideration just to understand how zeros are affecting the amplitude response okay so this single pole uh, single uh, single zero filter it is a non realizable filter filter of system whatever you say now let's look into the amplitude response what we have it will be having a certain value because our d1 it is finite so it will be having some uh, finite value so the amplitude response is finite as we are going to the j omega point near to the j omega point what is happening since the distance is reducing see the amplitude value it is reducing and it reduces to the minimum at omega naught and thereafter if we start going towards the higher frequencies there is an increase in the amplitude response so at frequency tending to infinity our amplitude will also tend to infinity and in the phase response as the value ch uh, changes from minus pi to plus pi for any given system if you go back so these are the, all these phases are positive value so if you see for zeros the pi values it will usually vary from z, uh, 0 to plus pi now if you are having a combination of both zeros and uh, uh, poles then you may have something uh, opposite systems where some values may be negative or positive depending upon which one is more uh, predominant sir ultimate goal is to maximizing the amplitude or minimizing that it depends on you what what you want yeah what do you uh, why do you use filters why do you use filters Like filters or any system, analog system, say uh, an amplifier. Okay, so you increase the gain. Filters, what it does? You have frequency dependent gain, but do you have any system where the gain is one in the pass band? No. Okay. Usually we add some gain also over there. So we try to increase the gain over there. 
but saying this when we talk about the filters for some frequencies we want the signals to pass through but some other frequency components they should be stopped so some frequency bands will be passed some frequency band will be stopped so it is basically the addition of both of these so which frequencies you want to pass which frequencies you want to stop that is the main thing and usually what happens while designing the filter uh, what we do is that we accept the gain and any uh, in many a cases you will find that there will be some phase distortion if the phase distortion is within certain limits we accept that distortion okay that we will be discussing when we will specifically go into the digital systems okay yeah now another thing what i would like to say is that suppose as we move from right to left and if we place more number of poles what would be the effect if you see because over here in we will just consider the point j omega and we will see the effect so if you see the point p1 it is having the shorter distance point p2 it is slightly greater point p3 it is slightly greater so nearer a pole is towards the resonating frequency component or the axis or the frequency axis more will be its effect as we put the pole farther from the frequency axis its activity will decline okay similarly if we consider another case uh we consider a similar case in the zero say we have z1 z2 z3 again zeros are meant to suppress the gain so here in the distance is the smaller small, uh, smallest uh, among z1 z2 z3 as we go to the z2 distance increases when we go to z3 the distance further increases so what is our main intention our main intention is to suppress the gain by placing the zero so here in also if you see the more closer we place the zero towards uh, towards the frequency axis the more will be the activity the more will be the activity so if we generalize our statement we can say placing a pole or a zero nearer to the frequency axis will have maximum effect will have maximum effect okay now there is another condition when i say that when we try to put the poles and the zeros nearer to the axis why not on the axis itself that can be a case right so why not on the axis so what happens if i put a pole on the axis on the frequency axis itself so what happens d will be zero one by zero infinite the system will become will give infinite response at a particular point at the resonant frequency okay however in all other frequencies you will get some responses finite responses because d will be finite so such kind of systems they are called marginally stable systems because they are usually stable in most of the frequency components however at some particular frequency components the output it is going out of box okay it is going out of box so this is there 
Next, what happens if I put a zero? Wherever you put, doesn't matter. Okay, wherever you put, it doesn't matter because at the resonance frequency, what will happen? It is directly proportional. Modulus of h of s, it will be directly uh, directly proportional to the distance. So distance will be zero. That's it. And if it is zero, this amplitude response it would be zero. Okay. Also in our last class we have discussed that we can place poles only on the left hand side of the S plane, whereas zeros can be placed anywhere on the plane. It can be placed on the right hand side or on the margin uh, on the imaginary axis. Or on the left hand side. Okay. Any questions till now? No. Okay. Now let's go to the double membrane concept. This double membrane concept it is a qualitative method to understand the frequency response of a filter. Okay. It will only give you a qualitative response say for example i have placed a pole and when i have placed a pole it is usually having a radius or the region of interest where it will cast its effect okay the effect of the pole it is not universal it will be having a local effect okay and that is why as we move away from the frequency axis our activity is decreasing okay now to understand this let us take an example where we have a table this black shaded area this is the table and onto that we have fixed a rubber membrane at the edges okay the rubber membrane is placed and at the edges we have fixed the rubber membrane okay now within this under this rubber membrane at a particular location if i place a pencil what will it be having it will be forming a cone like structure like this one. okay it will be forming a cone like structure so when we look here to here so what is happening this is the top view this is the first one is the top view from the top we are looking so this circular radius is nothing but the base of the cone okay now if you see what is happening we are having its effect some of the effect on the frequency axis also okay because when we talked about the filters and the systems we are basically interested on the frequency axis which is basically the imaginary axis which is basically the imaginary axis okay now since if you look over here this cone and if you come over here directly from here to here what i have done see suppose this is the point which is being intersecting with the imaginary line and i have just sliced it top say like here i have sliced it top this position i have sliced it top this one okay so we are having this one as zero frequency omega 1 omega 2 so when we have sliced it top so somewhere we are we are having the zero frequency lower to that we are having the omega 1 and omega 2 are you getting my point now if you stretch it we get something like this frequency is increasing so 0 omega 1 omega 2 so how it is looking it is giving us a feeling of that the addition of a pole what it has done it has 
um, what we have created? We have created a low-pass filter. We have created a low-pass filter. Okay. Now, if I want to design a high-pass filter, we will not place the pole near to the origin. We will the higher side. And up to whatever region we want to pass the um, frequency components, you just place the poles at appropriate distance and you will be able to create a high pass filter. Okay. What about band pass filter? In the band pass filter, poles will be allowing then we have to stop the frequency components at particular period. So on the frequency axis, let's put two zeros. Okay. So how it would look like frequency uh, this thing? Suppose here is the zero. So we'll be having some ripples. Then we'll be having suppose here we have a pole here uh, we have a pole, and again it will decrease. We have a zero over here. There will be ripples. Now, why these ripples are coming? Say, for example, I have told you that you have this rebel membrane which has been stretched towards upside. Suppose I use a board pane which will be analogous to the zero, and if I put in over here. At that particular location, I have put the board pin over here. So, since this is a rubber membrane, so it will come over here, then here, like this. It is something like that. You all have, uh, must, uh, you all of you must have heard about this uh, gravity fabric. Uh, yeah. When you put something, so think of the matter as the pin. You have put the pin over here. So. So something like this you will be having right and all of the fabric it will be something like that. So these are stretchable things right. This fabric is a stretchable stuff. So in between we are having the pin and because of that there is a distortion, there is a local distortion and due to this local distortion we are getting see it is trying to bounce back. So due to this we have this ripple effect. Okay. So you can understand and appreciate how this rubber membrane concept it can help us to understand how to design a system without actually going into the mathematics. Okay. So once you understand this mechanics, designing of filter it will become easier for you guys. So I have talked about this band pass filter. What I have told you place poles, you do it right, and then you put two zeros, you get the band pass filter. Then band rejects filter or band stop filter. Again over here, band reject filter, band stop filter. So in a band reject filter, you basically stop a stop particular frequencies. So again, it will be at least a two pole system. So just after the pole, you place a zero on the frequency axis, and just at the beginning of the second pole, just before that, you place another zero. So what will be the frequency response? Uh, its x-axis is the real component, and y-axis is the imaginary uh, yeah, axis. Which is basically the j omega axis, right? Now, what would be the frequency in this thing? It would be something like this. So, what is this? Band reject filter. You are getting my point. Then, notch filter. Notch filter means only particular one single frequency component, it will be stopped. So, uh, 
how to design that again let us put two poles so what it will do we will be having say this kind of system so maybe one pole might be somewhere over here or somewhere over uh, near to this frequency components say omega 1 and omega 2 okay but we want a notch filter which only stops a particular frequency just in between will place a zero so when we place a zero in between what will happen just from here the frequency will be modulated to something like this so ultimately you will be having this thing so this would be your omega not which is the resonating frequency or the not uh, the frequency which you want to eliminate okay so you see we have not diverged into mathematics yet we have not discussed about any um, uh, specifications of the filters of the system but we are able to visualize how we can develop a system kya hua mobile mein kya kar rahe hain you are not interested you may leave Otherwise, how will you make the for the notch filter? It depends upon your designing, as I told you, where you want to see. Uh, when you have two poles and in between you put a zero so what is happening this is coming like this right now say for example i keep the zero same but i move uh, these points closer uh, these poles closer So what has happened? The rule of health changed, and usually, as you move, uh, as you increase the rule of, so what will happen? To maintain the amplitude response in the pass band, we may have to put other holes also. Okay. So basically, what we are doing then, we are basically increasing the order of the filter we are basically increasing the order of the filter okay so this is important so it all depends upon your designing criteria what you want to design uh, because when we talk about the band rigid filter or something like this so what we need is that we need a Minus three dB decay. Okay, so you may not have to always place the zero onto the imaginary axis. You may place it just outside the uh, imaginary axis on the uh, left hand side also to get the and uh, to get this minus three dB uh, decay. which is sufficient to design a filter and say technically that i have achieved a filter which is having notch uh, filter capabilities okay so you see you have a lot of flexibility of how you can control the gain of a particular system okay now the next thing is that when we have say two filters say low pass filter and high pass filter using the low pass filter and the high pass filter we can design band pass filter and band rigid filter but there is there are certain conditions what are the conditions for designing the band pass filter if 
we look over here the bandpass filter so this is mega high because from here the high pass components high frequency components they are getting passed and the upper one is omega l which is the frequency cut off for the low pass filter okay so if you see for a band pass filter the um, omega lpf low, uh, the cut off frequency of the low pass filter it should be greater than the cut off frequency of the high pass filter if it is not the case so what will happen you will be having the lpf first say you have the lpf then what is happening this high frequency components it is getting rejected then when it passes to the, the hpf this lpf gets rejected so at the output you basically get nothing no signal even if you try to pass the signal through the high pass filter first so when you pass the signal uh, the signal through the high pass filter initially the low pass frequency components they are getting rejected and then next when you are putting it through the low pass filter the high pass frequency will get rejected so ultimately you will get nothing so to design a band pass filter using a set of low pass filter and a high pass filter omega lpf should be greater than the omega hpf okay cut off frequency of the low pass filter should be greater than equal to uh, uh, greater than not equal to should be greater than cut off frequency of the high pass filter now coming to the band reject filter here if you see we have added the low pass filter and the high pass filter in parallel so the signal they pass simultaneously through both low pass filter and the high pass filter and then we are adding it up so in this case what is happening if you see omega lpf is smaller than omega hpf okay that's why you will be able to get this thing okay now if you bring this omega lpf and omega hpf nearer to each other then you will be able to design the notch filter using this architecture okay parallel combination of the systems this is called the first one is called the series combination the uh, second one it is called the parallel combination okay. sir on the series circuit if we change the phase of low pass filter and high pass filter does it work similarly or just uh, i told you i told you so what will happen if you interchange say hpf then lpf so hpf mein kya hoga high pass filter this is coming so you are getting this thing when you will be passing this signal this output of the hpf through the low pass filter low pass filter cut off is this one it's so but it has been already rejected so you will not get any signal but but this lpf will do it will again reject this high pass component so you will basically get nothing at the output okay so this is commutative in nature basically commutative ha huh? in either way it will be the same कम्युनिटी में मतलब क्या है वेर एवर यू प्लेस द सिस्टम इट विल बी विल बी गिविंग यू द सेम रिस्पॉन्स सो बैंड पास फिल्टर वेदर यू प्लेस एल पी एफ फर्स्ट एंड एच पी एफ सेकेंड और वाइस एवर सर द रिजल्ट शुड बी सेम इफ यू डू नॉट मीट दिस कंसिडरेशन दैट ओमेगा एल पी एफ Uh, is greater than omega hpf then you will not have any signal output okay <clears throat> now coming to the next here just a basic thing uh, 
so when we place uh, any force or filter something like this so if you say we are having real so real component we say a minus a b minus b and what happens in each of the quadrant for the phase component tan inverse of in the first quadrant we have tan inverse of b by a in the second tan inverse of b by a plus of pi in the third quadrant it is tan inverse of b by a minus pi and in the fourth quadrant it is the tan inverse of b by a now there are certain uh, a positive real axis if you see this is zero imaginary axis pi by 2 we are going pi by 2 okay negative real axis okay going to pi but it, it is minus by basically we are going from here okay we already discussed in one of the cases the negative uh, the imaginary axis it is minus pi by 2 so whether it is minus pi or pi it does not affect that much. so usually it will be put it as minus pi so this is it from next time onwards we will start the next uh, topic will take some time so I will not start today. Uh, another important thing uh, if you look into the phase how the phase is calculated so um, I think I forgot to tell so you have to draw a parallel line with that of the x-axis and from that line you will go anti-clockwise to calculate the phase okay whether it is here whether it is here wherever it is you draw a parallel line and then from that parallel line go anti-clockwise to calculate the case okay. any questions